Hello friends, welcome back to ESL Trail. I am MNB Achari. This is part 2 of the lesson My Childhood about Abdul Kalam. At the end of the first part of this lesson, we learned that India was forced to join the Allied forces and that was why there was something like a state of emergency. A state of emergency was not declared, but the situation was like that. And let's proceed from there. Let me read this. The first casualty came in the form of the suspension of the train halt at Rameshwaram station. The newspapers had to be bundled and thrown out from the moving train on the Rameshwaram road between Rameshwaram and Danishkodi. That forced my cousin Samsuddin, who distributed newspapers in Rameshwaram, to look for a helping hand, to catch the bundles, and as if naturally, I filled the slot. Samsuddin helped me earn my first wages. Half a century later, I can still feel the surge of pride in earning my own money for the first time. The first casualty came in the form of the suspension of the train halt. Let's look at um, what it means. We are discussing effect of the Second World War or India participating in the Second World War. Let's look at the word casualty. Casualty means somebody or something that suffers as a result of a particular event or situation. Here the particular event is India joining the Allied forces during the Second World War. And what happened as a result of it? The first result or first effect came in the form of the suspension of the train halt. What is suspension? It's nothing but the act of stopping something officially for a period of time. What was stopped temporarily? What was stopped for a short period of time? Train halt. Actually, the train would halt. Halt means stop. The train would stop at Rameshwaram station, but as a result of India joining the Allied forces, the train stop was cancelled temporarily. That's what happened. Now, what happened was the newspapers had to be bundled and thrown out from the moving train. So, earlier the train would stop there and then newspapers would be taken from the train and then they would be distributed in Rameshwaram town. But the problem now was the train would not stop. Now, what happened? The newspapers had to be bundled. I mean, they were bundled and then thrown out from the running train and on the Rameshwaram road between Rameshwaram and Dhanushkodi. Okay, Dhanushkodi is another place. That forced my cousin Samsuddin, who distributed newspapers in Rameshwaram, to look for a helping hand to catch the bundles. So, Abdul Kalam's cousin Samsuddin was a distributor, newspaper distributor. Now, he wanted somebody to help him with catching the bundles thrown from the running train. And, you know, who would naturally help? That would be Abdul Kalam, because he was uh, a relative, a cousin of uh, uh, Samsuddin. So, he looked for somebody and Kalam started helping. And Samsuddin helped me earn my first wages. Look at this here. Kalam said this. Kalam said that Samsuddin helped him earn his first wages. What is that? Wage. That's money that you earn, which is paid according to the number of hours, days or weeks uh, that you work. Maybe daily or maybe every week or maybe for hours. Okay, so that is how Kalam could make some money. And look at the next lines here. Half a century later, means even after 50 years, Kalam says, I can still feel the surge of pride in earning my own money for the first time. Surge. Look at this word. Surge is a sudden increase of a strong feeling. What is that strong feeling that suddenly increased in him? That strong feeling is a strong feeling of Pride. He was really proud of the fact that he earned his own money for the first time. Of course, this is not the first time. Uh, he actually sold some tamarind seeds and then uh, made some money. Of course, that was a very uh, small amount of money. I mean, princely sum, not very large amount of money. So, we have to take this into consideration. Okay, now, let's move to the next part. Every child is born with some inherited characteristics into a specific socio-economic and emotional environment 
and trained in certain ways by figures of authority. I inherited honesty and self-discipline from my father. From my mother, I inherited faith in goodness and deep kindness. And so did my three brothers and sister. I had three close friends in my childhood, Ramanath Sastri, Aravindan and Sivaprakasan. All these boys were from orthodox Hindu Brahmin families. Kekalam talks about the good qualities that he got from his parents. Let's see what they are. Every child is born with some inherited characteristics. Look at the word inherited. means derived or got genetically from one's parents or ancestors. So if you get some characteristics, if you get some qualities from your parents, you say that you inherited those characteristics. Now, every child is born with some inherited characteristics. I mean that the child gets from the parents. And not just that, into a specific socio-economic and emotional environment. Look at this word socio-economic. This can be pronounced as uh, socio-economic or socio-economic. That's up to you. And emotional environment. Let's look at a socio-economic. That means based on a combination of social and economic conditions. So every child is born with some characteristic features and at the same time, the child is thrown into a certain combination of social and economic condition. It means uh, that the child is influenced by the society and by the economic conditions of the family. So, depending on whether the family is poor or a middle class family or a rich a family or a super rich family, depending on that, the child acquires a certain uh, certain more characteristics apart from the inherited characteristics and emotional environment. Now, how the child gets more characteristics is dependent on the emotional environment that the child is in. It means if the child receives love and affection, the child tends to uh, get more good characteristics. And not just that, these children are trained in certain ways by figures of authority. Let's look at figures of authority here. People who can influence others. Let me give you an example. Every one of us in our lives has certain influence that we have from other people. Maybe from our family members. Maybe we have uh, our parents' influence. They shape our attitude. They shape our habits they shape our thinking so that is how they can influence maybe teachers can help you uh, get some good characteristics so we call these people figures of authority it might be your parents it might be your friends it might be your teachers whoever figures of authority so kalam also had certain figures of authority in his life he inherited certain characteristics and depending on the society and the economic conditions that uh, Kalam grew up in, he had certain more characteristics. We'll discuss them now. This is what Kalam said. I inherited honesty and self-discipline from my father. Kalam got these two characteristics from his father. And what about mother? From his mother, he inherited faith in goodness and deep kindness. Faith in goodness and deep kindness. And look at this here, so did my three brothers and sister, so did my three brothers and sisters. It means, similarly, my three brothers and sister also received the same qualities from my parents. And Kalam also talks about his three friends he had in his childhood. I had three close friends in my childhood, Ramanath Sastri, Aravindan and Sevaprakasan. All these boys were from orthodox Hindu Brahmin families. Orthodox means traditional. So traditional Brahmin families. Traditional Hindu Brahmin families. Okay, we'll discuss more about these friends in the further paragraph. Let's move, shall we? As children, none of us ever felt any difference amongst ourselves because of our religious differences and upbringing. In fact, Ramanath Sastri was the son of Pakshi Lakshmana Sastri, the high priest of the Rameshwaram temple. Later, he took over the priesthood of the Rameshwaram temple from his father. Aravindan went into the business of arranging transport for visiting pilgrims, and Seo Prakasan became a catering contractor for the southern railways. 
Look at this here. As children, none of us ever felt any difference amongst ourselves. Kalam says that he and his friends never felt any difference amongst themselves because of their religious differences and upbringing. Look at this here. Upbringing. The way that your parents care for you and teach you to behave when you are growing up. I mean, how they take care of you when you grow up as a child. That is what we call upbringing. Now, they did not feel any differences even though they belonged to different religions. Kalam was a Muslim and Ramanatha Sastri, Aravindan and Sri Prakasan were from Hindu families. So, even then, they did not have any differences amongst themselves. In fact, Ramanatha Sastri was the son of Pakshi Lakshmana Sastri, the high priest of the Rameshwaram temple. Means here, the main priest of the Rameshwaram temple. Later, he took over the priesthood. Here, he is Ramanatha Sastri. Ramanatha Sastri took over. Means here, he took the responsibility of being the high priest or being a priest in the same Rameshwaram temple. So, he took that responsibility from his father, Pakshi Lakshmana Sastri. And what about Aravindan? Aravindan went into the business of arranging transport for visiting pilgrims. So, he arranged uh, transport for visiting pilgrims. Pilgrims are people who travel to holy places for religious reasons. Aravindan arranged transport for the people who visited Rameshwaram temple in that town. And the last one, Sivaprakasan, he became a catering contractor. Let's look at catering first. The activity of uh, providing and serving food and drinks at parties, meetings, etc. for money. But here, it starts so. It's just serving food and drinks, but not at parties now. Because he's a contractor. Now, he provided food for southern railways. Okay? okay now, let's move to the next part. During the annual Sri Sita Ramakalyanam ceremony, our family used to arrange boats with a special platform for carrying idols of the Lord from the temple to the marriage site, situated in the middle of the pond called Ramatitha, which was near our house. Events from the Ramayana and from the life of the Prophet were the bedtime stories my mother and grandmother would tell the children in our family. So, during the annual Sri Sita Ramakalyanam ceremony, let's look at the word ceremony. That's a religious occasion, uh, uh, a public or religious occasion. So, here, Sita Ramakalyanam, that is a religious occasion. And a Kalam's family, I mean, Kalam's father used to arrange boats with a special platform for carrying idols. So, let's look at idol. That's a statue that is worshipped as a god. Here, Lord Sri Rama. And these idols were carried to the marriage site. I mean, the place where the marriage would take place. It was actually situated in the middle of the pond called Ramatitha and it was close to Kalam's house. Look at the next lines. Events from the Ramayana and from the life of the prophet were the bedtime stories. What is this prophet? What does this mean? The prophet means Prophet Muhammad who founded the religion of Islam, founder of Islam religion. Kalam's grandmother used to tell him bedtime stories. And they, the stories were about events from the Ramayana and events from the life of the Prophet Muhammad. So you can understand how they did not show any difference between the two religions. This was wonderful. Okay, let's move to the next part. One day, when I was in the 5th standard at the Rameshwaram Elementary School, a new teacher came to our class. I used to wear a cap which marked me as a Muslim, and I always sat in the front row next to Ramanatha Shastri, who wore the sacred thread. The new teacher could not stomach a Hindu priest's son sitting with a Muslim boy. In accordance with our social ranking, as the new teacher saw it, I was asked to go and sit on the back bench. I felt very sad, and so did Ramanatha Shastri. He looked utterly downcast as I shifted to my seat in the last row. The image of him weeping when I shifted to the last row left a lasting impression on me. It was when Kalam was in 5th standard in Rameshwaram Elementary School. There was a new teacher who came to that uh, class, I mean their class. Kalam was wearing a cap and it marked him as a Muslim 
and Ramanada Shastri was wearing a sacred thread, a holy thread that some uh, Hindu families, Hindu people wear. Holy thread, that's sacred thread. Ramanada Shastri was wearing a sacred thread. And the new teacher could not stomach a Hindu priest son sitting with a Muslim boy. Stomach here means accept or digest or tolerate. He could not tolerate the sight, S-I-G-H-T. He could not accept the fact that a Hindu priest son and a Muslim boy were sitting together. So, look at that. In accordance with our social ranking, as the new teacher saw it, in accordance with something means according to a rule or a system or something according to the system that was then and what the teacher could understand he asked his uh, student kalam to go and sit on the back bench and see this kalam felt really very sad and so did ramanath shastri it means ramanath shastri felt bad too and ramanath shastri looked utterly downcast Utterly means completely and downcast means upset or sad. Ramanada Shastri was completely sad or upset as Kalam shifted to his seat in the last row. The image of Ramanada Shastri crying when Kalam shifted to the last row. Look at this here. Weep means cry. Ramanada Shastri was crying for Kalam. And that image, that sight left a lasting impression on Kalam. Look at the word lasting here. Strong impression on Kalam. Kalam could never forget that. What happened next? After school, we went home and told our respective parents about the incident. Lakshman Sastri summoned the teacher and in our presence told the teacher that he should not spread the poison of social inequality and communal intolerance in the minds of innocent children. He bluntly asked the teacher to either apologize or quit the school and the island. Not only did the teacher regret his behavior, but the strong sense of conviction Lakshman Sastri conveyed ultimately reformed this young teacher. Okay, after school, Kalam and Ramanath Sastri went to their houses and they told their respective parents about this. Respective means relating us separately to each of the people or things already mentioned. So here Kalam told his father and Ramanath Shastri told his father about what happened in the school. Ramanath Shastri, the high priest of Rameshwaram temple, immediately summoned the teacher, Miss ordered the teacher to come to his house. And the teacher went there and in the presence of Ramanath Shastri and Kalam, Lakshmana Shastri told the teacher that he should not spread the poison of social inequality and communal intolerance. Social inequality. So he wanted to say that everybody was equal in the society. And he asked the teacher not to spread social inequality. He also said that it was like poison. And he also told him not to spread communal intolerance. Let's look at communal intolerance here. Not being able to bear or endure or digest beliefs of other communities. Now, if we uh, endure or if we accept or if we have no objection to uh, the beliefs of other communities, that is communal tolerance. But if we cannot bear, if we cannot endure, if we cannot accept the beliefs of other communities, that's communal intolerance. Yet Lakshmana Shastri thought that the teacher was spreading communal intolerance in the minds of innocent children. That's why he told him not to do that. Look at the next lines here. He bluntly asked the teacher, means, so without any consideration, he bluntly, the opposite of sharp, he bluntly asked the teacher to either apologize or quit the school. Apologize means he had to say sorry about what happened. Or quit the school. Quit, quit, quit. Three forms are the same. Leave the school and the island. I mean Rameshwaram town. What happened as a result? Not only did the teacher regret his behavior, but the strong sense of conviction Lakshman Sastri conveyed ultimately reformed this young teacher. So two things happened. The teacher regretted his behavior. This is called inversion type sentence. When we have a negative sounding expression at the beginning of a sentence, we have inversion, helping verb, subject and V1. Not only did the teacher regret, means here, 
the teacher not only felt sorry about what happened in the school, but also the strong sense of conviction Lakshmana Sastri conveyed ultimately reformed this young teacher. Conviction means a strong opinion and belief. Here Lakshmana Sastri tried to explain to him his strong opinion about the problems of communal intolerance and social inequality. And these things changed this young teacher. Reformed means changed. Ultimately means finally. Finally, these things changed the young teacher. Lakshmana Sastri's words changed the young teacher. Okay friends, that is the end of part 2 of the lesson my childhood. I'll see you in the next part. Until then, take care. Thank you very much for watching and don't forget to subscribe if you are new here.